Hello everyone, welcome to Mind Game with Ritvika. Today in this video, I will be reviewing the recently concluded second season of the WPL. We had a spectacular season and uh, let's look back at some of the highlights and how the teams fared in this season. First of all, I will be addressing what went wrong uh, for the Gujarat Giants and the UP Warriors. Both the teams have many similar sorts of problems. The two teams depend heavily on their Aussie overseas players. In the last season for UP, uh, where the overseas players were in supreme touch and took them to the knockouts, that wasn't the case this season. Megra and Captain Healy were searching for form throughout the season. On the other hand, the Giants overseas players were far worse in terms of form especially someone like Ash Gardner who was pretty underwhelming in both seasons with the bat and young Litchfield couldn't click at all. The second problem both teams have is the lack of Indian quality batters. It has a lot to do with their auction strategy. In the maiden auction, neither the teams went for reputed India batters. And in this mini auction, they put all their money on the young Indian players who haven't even debuted for India. If a team's strategy relies on uncapped players' success heavily like Vrinda Dinesh, Kashvi Gautam and, and Shweta Seherawat, that shows a serious flaw in the team building strategy. Also last year where GG's India batters did well, uh, this year both Harleen and Hamlet were disappointing. But uh, the teams also lacked pace options heavily this season. After uh, the Cheetal and, uh, and Kashvi setbacks, uh, Gigi roped in Leah Tahuhu and uh, Sayali Sadghare. On one hand, Tahuhu was uh, already going through a rough patch. On the other hand, Gigi didn't even play Sayali uh, in any of the games and uh, continued to give chances to Meghna Singh throughout the season, who was never an ideal T20 bowler and uh, went expensive in most of the games. But the late introduction of the 16-year-old pacer Shabnam Shakil redeemed Gigi to, to some extent. If Gigi's strategy with pace was worse, then UPW's strategy was far worse and comical. Um, they not only released someone like Shabni Ismail, but things got worse when uh, Lauren Bell also withdrew from the WPL this season. Despite this uh, lull in the pace department, uh, where uh, Talia Magra became their leading pacer, they brought in more batting options in Chamari Atapatu and Uma Chetri. Does this really make sense? They easily could go for Nicola Hancock, Heather Graham or Harley Gala. Saima Thakur was the only positive that came out of their abysmal pace department. And then, last but not least, foreign captains make the team combinations less flexible. For Healy being out of form, UP could bring in Danny White, but that wasn't possible. On the other hand, Mooney uh, is a vital cog in the GG team and contributed massively with the bat, but she is certainly not a good captain and someone who is not even interested in captaincy, unlike Healy. Both teams have to find out what the Indian captaincy options for next season. Also good keeper batters. Apart from Meg Lanning, no overseas players really deserve to lead in the WPL. Now we move on to the most consistent teams throughout the two WPL seasons, Mumbai Indians and Delhi Capitals. The reason for their consistency is the great scouting and squad building in the first auction. They laid the foundation of success there only. But one clear distinction between the two teams is the middle order and uh, the overseas all-rounders. DC's success depended a lot on the opening pair of Shafali and Meg Lanning. Both of them were phenomenal, but the real problem uh, lied in the middle order and the lower middle order. Capsa did well in the Bangalore leg and Jemima did well in the Delhi leg, but after these four, uh, they have Marizan Cup and Jace Johnson, both of, both of whom are more bowling all-rounders than batting. Even Minu Mani, Shikha Pandey, Radha Yadav and Arundhati Reddy um, are also more of bowling all-rounders for that matter. This is a big reason for them uh, losing back-to-back -back finals. When the top order failed, the lower order crumbled under pressure. Uh, in the bench, they have uh, either pure batters or pure bowlers. So they wanted to fix this problem by roping in Sutherland, but even uh, she uh, had a poor season like last year. Uh, so they couldn't play her in the 11 that often. 
On the other hand, Mumbai have a strong middle order and three of the best all-rounders in the world, so Nat Sivar Brunt, Haley Matthews and Emilia Kerr. But unlike last year, the three all-rounders weren't in uh, in their peak form, especially Haley Matthews. But their gains from this season must be Yastika Bhatia's brilliant striking, Herman's form that literally saved them uh, in this season, except uh, in the eliminator where her wicket became the turning point and the incredible Sajana Sajivan. Also, Shabni Mismail made their bowling more lethal. I don't think these two teams have any major problems uh, as such to address, but uh, DC uh, do need to look uh, for better keeper batters so that their batting prolongs, whereas Mumbai had uh, an even better squad than last year. Uh, the only thing um, for them is the utilization of the Indian players and how they can give more exposure to the lower order batters in the coming season because that's what became the, the reason for their elimination uh, this year. Talking about the champions, the RCB team uh, and their tactics were flawed, but they won the important moments and players like Elise Perry and Rija Ghosh stood up in the right games. Also the inclusions of Sophie Molyneux, Georgia Wareham and Ismegna did wonders for them coupled with uh, consistent performances from the Indian Troika, Asha Shobna, Sriyanka Patil and skipper Smriti Mandhana. One of the biggest reasons of RCB did badly last season was Smriti's poor form. But this year, her batting form injected a lot of confidence in her captaincy as well. Assembling a squad full of stars finally paid RCB off this season. They have a near-perfect squad. The only thing they can look for is a good Indian Pacers. Renuka has been below average in both seasons for RCB, but next season when Kanika Ahuja and Heather Knight will come back, their addition will strengthen RCB's batting more. But RCB's WPL win has a lot more significance. Given the huge fan base RCB's men's team has, this WPL win of RCB brought in that huge fan base not just to the WPL but to women's cricket as well. And the long wait RCB fans had for the trophy, coupled with RCB's incredible last three match run, made this WPL trophy victory euphoric and will be remembered as a historic one for a long time. Now, here I made an 11 out of the unlucky players who only warmed the bench throughout this season. These are the players who should have got, uh, got to play uh, in some point of the tournament. Danny White of UPW and Shubha Shatish of RCB are my openers. DC is Sneha Dipti at 3. It's, uh, it's mind-boggling that she, she couldn't get a chance in both the seasons. Then Ashwani Kumari at 4. RCB is Indrani Roy uh, is my wicketkeeper. Unfortunately, a force like Laura Harris also has not got a single game in the WPL. Chloe Tryon of MI, another unfortunate player. Then Kate Cross at 8. A toss-up between MI's Chinaman bowler Amandeep Kaur and Gigi's young leggy Priya Mishra. Then DC's Poonam Yadav at 10 who also didn't get any game this year. And Gigi's Sally Sadgare at 11. Then comes the most important 11, the WPL 11. Uh, Smriti Mandana and Shafali Verma to open in my 11. Then Meg Lanning at 3 and she will be my captain. Uh, Ellis Perry at 4, Richa Ghosh the keeper at 5, Marizan Kap at 6, Dipti Sharma at 7, Tanuja Kanwar at 8. Um, I mean, she was phenomenal. And the kind of situations she bowled in, it was uh, phenomenal to watch. She got wicket in every game. Dipti was also phenomenal. She, she was great with, the, with both bat and ball. And it was so good to watch her uh, playing, uh, playing that well. Then uh, Sriyanka Patil at 9, Asha Shobna at 10. She is also another uh, having a fairy tale in the WPL. Then uh, Shabnim Ismail at 11 and Jemima Rodriguez will be my 12th player. Now, uh, this is the segment of utmost priority, the next possible 18-member squad of Team India, the T20 squad. Uh, Smriti Mandana, Sh Shafali Verma, Harman Preet Kaur, Jemima Rodriguez, Richa Ghosh, Dipti Sharma, Pooja Vastrakar, Radha Yadav. Yes, she has been uh, really good and deserves a comeback. Then uh, Shriyanka Patil, Tita Sadhu, Renuka Singh Thakur, then uh, Asha Shobna, the leg spinner is my sure pick. Then Kanika Ahuja, 
मई मीनू मानी यस्तिका भाटिया माई बैकअप कीपर देन तनुजा कन्वर तनुजा कन्वर शुड ऑल्सो मेक हर डेब्यू देन अ टॉस अप बिटवीन शिखा पांडे एंड अरुंधति रेड्डी एंड देन अनदर टॉस अप बिटवीन शायका ईशाक एंड सजना सजीवन बट माई पिक्स वुड बी सजना एंड शिखा ओवर देम सो मन्नत कश्यप एंड शायका ईशाक पॉसिबली गो आउट ऑफ द स्क्वाड फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस वन Now what's next the indian players are to be seen in the interzonal tournament in pune between march 28 and april 11 after six long years bcci reintroduced the red ball competition in an interzonal format where six teams representing the six zones east west north south central and northeast will fight it out in a series of five three day matches so that's it from my side uh, i hope you all like uh, my wpl review thank you so much for watching this video till the end